Hi guys, Mr Hill here with your second science lesson for this week. Our previous lesson we were looking at the strength of materials, so we were looking at how strong paper was, that was what we were going to test, and we were finding a way of testing it. What we're going to look at today is writing that up. So a few things we're going to need to think about. Can I make a scientific prediction? Well, you should have done that yesterday or the, um, for our previous lesson. Made that prediction. Which paper did you think was going to be the strongest? Can you explain how to keep a test fair? Now, I know we've done lots of this in class and we keep going on about it when we design our experiments. I know we certainly did before Christmas. And then record your findings and make a conclusion. So it's about finding an appropriate way to record it, whether it's in a graph, in a table, as a list. We'll cover that as we go through it. So last lesson, I set you the challenge of testing the strengths of different types of paper. Today, we're going to write up our test as a scientific investigation. So what we will need, we'll need a question. What are we trying to find out? We'll need to make a prediction. What do we think will happen? We need a method. Include a diagram as well. What did we do? How was it fair? The reason for having a method in there is so that if someone else wanted to test what you'd found out, they can pick up your experiment and go, right, they did this, then this, then this. And that will give them the opportunity to make a fair test. Our results. What did we observe? So what did we see? What have we measured? And our conclusion. So what did we find out? This will answer the question we asked right at the beginning of our experiment. So we're trying to find out what was the strongest type of paper. So our conclusion will say, having tested a sample of paper, we've discovered that this particular type of paper was the strongest. So the following example I'm about to show you is for my investigation. So it's how I did it. Yours might end up being slightly different. So please, you can copy the format, but please make sure it's about the way you did the test and not just copying how I did it. So my question, from a sample, which type of paper is the strongest? Now I've said from a sample here because I haven't tested every single type of paper. There are hundreds, if not thousands of different types of paper from toilet paper, kitchen roll, newspaper, cardboard, card, newspaper, um, not you, magazine paper, the shiny paper. There's lots of different types. So I haven't got a piece of every single type of paper, so I can't test all of them. So I've taken a sample. I've taken a small amount that I can test. My prediction. So from my sample, I think, that the cereal box will be the strongest. That was my prediction. So we should have had our prediction before we made our test. And this shouldn't change. This gives you the opportunity. If you predicted that something else should be stronger and it wasn't, it gives you an opportunity in your conclusion to have a look at why you think that's the case, why you think you were wrong. So our method. This is the set of instructions for someone else to follow. So as I said, if someone said, oh, do you know what, I don't think that's quite right. I'm going to redo their experiment. If you've written the method down, they can see exactly how you've done it. A, draw, a diagram might be helpful. That will help someone to explain how you've laid the test out. So to keep my test fair, I cut all the samples of paper to the same size. I cut them into strips 12 centimetres long by three centimetres wide. In our last lesson, I did say make sure you keep the pieces of paper the same size so that it's one less variable, so we keep it as fair as, pos as possible for the test. I taped a paper clip to the bottom centimetre to act as a hook for the weights, and I held the top centimetre between my finger and my thumb. This left 10 centimetres of each paper to test. Onto the paperclip hook, I placed a fabric bucket to hold my weights. 
One by one, I placed pebbles into the bucket until the paper ripped. I recorded the number of pebbles needed to rip the paper. I put pebbles into the bucket in the same order to make the increase in weight the same for each test so that it keeps it as a fair test. What I could do, I could weigh each pebble on its own and record those weights so that when someone else comes to redo the test, they can put the exact same amount of weight in each time and check my results. So I could make it even fairer. So here we have my strips, all cut 12 centimeters by three centimeters. That's how I've taped my paper clip on. That's how I've held it. So these are your diagrams you could draw out. So if you wanted to show how you held your paper, you can show that in your diagram. I then hooked my bucket on. So there's my bucket ready for my pebbles. And there are my pebbles laid out in order, ready to put them on. Thinking back, maybe I should have put numbers on them. So I made completely certain I was putting them all on in the same order. But that's something you can think about with your method. So our results. This is where you show what you recorded. We normally do this as a table when we're first taking them. So that's what I've done. So I've kept them in a table so it's really easy. So I've just got two headings, the type of paper and the number of pebbles. So down my left hand side, I've written the various types of paper that I tried. So I tried toilet roll, kitchen roll, printer paper, a piece of a magazine and a cereal box. On my right hand side, I've counted the number of pebbles before that paper ripped. So I had four for kit toilet roll, eight for kitchen roll, nine for printer paper, seven for the magazine, and 36 pebbles for the cereal box. I can take that information and I can turn it into a graph, like I've done here. So I can really quickly, really easily, I don't even have to look at the numbers, I can see straight away that the cereal box there at the end was the strongest. I can also see really quickly and easily that the toilet roll was the weakest. So I can put it in a visual format so it's really easy to, for anyone who picks it up to see what my results are. Finally, we need a conclusion. Simple, so from my sample, I found that the cereal box was the strongest type of paper. This simply answers our original question. So we go all the way back to the beginning. What was the question we were trying to answer? From a sample, which is the strongest type of paper? So our conclusion is, from my sample, I found that the cereal box was the strongest type of paper. So, your task for today. You're going to write up your investigation to find the strongest type of paper. You should include a question. What are you trying to find out? A prediction. What did you think was going to happen? A method, include a diagram. What did I do? How did I make sure it was fair? Your results, what did you observe and what did you measure? So think about it. You're measuring how much weight it's taken before you see the paper rip. A conclusion, what did you find out? That's gonna answer the question you asked at the very beginning, all the way back at the top. If you're stuck with answering some of these sentences, go back in the video, find that section, rewatch it, magpie some ideas from there if you need to. I look forward to seeing your work on Tapestry. Take care, guys. Stay safe, and I'll see you again soon.